Hi, Tile at Interfidelity here. We're going to run through the frequency response section of the headphone measurement test. Uh, on the computer here, I've got a uh, pre-written program uh, test sequence called my main sequence. If I open it up, it's going to launch the audio precision uh, control software. And we'll begin to set up the uh, tester for this particular test you could hear the relays clicking there uh, it's just a blank test at the moment until the script begins to run and calls the first actual test so I'm going to uh, push the run uh, up here button and it's going to ask me for the name of the headphone that I'm going to be testing in this case uh, it's an AKG Q701 that information is going to be put onto the spreadsheet as the test uh, carries on. I'll hit OK. Again you can hear all the relays clicking and now it's uh, set up the test panels for the uh, frequency response test. This panel is the controlling the analog generator. Uh, this panel is controlling the analog analyzer. This panel is controlling the sweep variables where the sweep starts and stops, the step sizes. Uh, the scaling of the graph. Uh, and this panel is the regulation panel. It's the panel that uh, controls the level of the test. Uh, so when I, when it, um, after I punch the button here, the first thing it'll do is set a 90 dB SPL level at the head. So it's ready to position the headphone forward, and we're going to look at positioning the headphones now. Okay, now we're going to position the headphones. Uh, in this case, I have a pair of uh, Audazy LCD2 headphones. This is a very good bass response headphone. As you can see, every time I talk, we can see my voice up here. These are open headphones, and my voice easily gets into the uh, system. Um, I'm putting a 30 hertz square wave in, and the square wave should look like this, which is this line right here. Um, this is a very low frequency signal. Uh, you can have it listen to it. Put it on the microphone here. Um, what we're trying to accomplish here is to ensure that we have a good seal on the headphones. Um, I just put them on here quickly and you can see the waveform is substantially different. Uh, that's because it's not sealing properly. There we go. Now you can see that uh, what's happening here is the uh, at the transition, it's now going to try to maintain this pressure inside the ear cup, but it's very, very low frequency and that has a very, very hard time doing that. And that's why I use this signal. You can see though, it does maintain the pressure substantially and at the very trailing end you can still see that the corner is above the zero line. So this little corner here is above the cursor line here. That's a good indication that this headphone has a substantial amount of bass response and of course it, th these do. If I break the seal, I'm just going to put my pen in here. Now you can see that there's substantially different signal. Uh, this is because the bass is not being properly contained in the chamber, going in and out of phase, um, just acting strangely. The other thing we can see if we change the time scale of the signal, is the fine structure at the leading edge of the uh, square wave 
And uh, this allows me to do some fine tuning of the signal to try to get it look as clean as possible. It'll be difficult to see this because every time I move the headphones it's a little bit noisy. But we'll give her a go and see if you can see the this fine structure changing. Okay, what that's doing is uh, as I move the headphones, it's changing the modal oscillations or the 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 uh, the modes, the acoustic modes inside the chamber and between the driver and the uh, eardrum because of the changes in geometry. Uh, so it allows me to, when I very finely position the test for um, it's. Uh, as it go after the frequency response and I've moved it in the five different positions when I put it in the center position I very carefully try to optimize uh, that leading edge so it's clean and uh, give the headphones the best shot at having a good result okay so this is uh, as I say the Odyssey LCD2 now we'll switch headphones and uh, take a look at another headphone we can see the differences in this case, I'm going to use a pair of AKG Q701s, Quincy Jones 701s, in lovely Quincy Jones green. I think they're kind of cool. Here we can see that the trailing edge of the signal has gone below the, cur the cursor line. This means that these headphones don't have the <coughs> bass response of the uh, Odyssey LCD2, which they don't. Uh, we can also see that the fine structure at the step response, essentially when it goes up this step, the fine st structure of that is substantially different than the LCD2. It uh, has a much higher initial peak. Uh, that tends to mean the headphones are going to sound a little uh, sharp and the 702s or 701s do sound uh, a little brighter than the LCD2. Again, you can see the fine structure changing. And we'll show the loss of bass response. <coughs> when I break the seal. Okay, in this case, there's very little bass response there. And next, we'll try a pair of Grado headphones.